r slash ask reddit what is the most adult thing you have ever done i woke up one morning and i realized i hated my ducking job i hated my boss i hated the project i was on i hated my commute i hated my work conditions then i put my pants on and went to work because i have a family to support and bills to pay my husband felt the same way recently he applied for a new job in a different department with different hours and a different commute got the job makes more money life is better it's worth a try finding a different position that makes you happy rather than accepting one that makes you miserable best of luck i found a little kid alone while i was at a concert that you don't want your kid to be alone at I was really ducked up but when I saw her walking through a crowd alone I got down on one knee and asked her if she was okay. She said she had gotten lost. I had her stand with me on a barricade right where I found her until an near hysterical mom came running up to claim her. I made sure her mom wasn't too ducked up to watch her. And it seemed like a genuine regular mistake. It was weird because random chicks kept trying to take the girl from me as though a dude couldn't be trusted to help a little girl. But I was just like nor she is staying right here until I find her parents. Good man. Kind man. Wise man. More of an old man thing. The week I bought my house there was a after school girl fight in my front yard. The house had been on the market for a while and they probably thought it was still empty. I ran out and yelled hey you kids get off of my lawn. But I couldn't help laughing. Pretty sure it was the uncontrollable laughter that scared them into running away. The spot to gather for the school bus used to be in my driveway, not next to the driveway, not on the sidewalk on either side of my driveway, the actual driveway. I'd wake up to kids practicing band instruments or yelling at each other. I did yell at them one day when they were bouncing a football against the front of the house. The last straw though was when I came out to see the mailbox had been utterly destroyed. Plastic pole too. I thought one of the kids was mad I had yelled or something. The next morning I opened the garage and leaned against my car in my robe, coffee in hand, giving all the kids the stinky while they shifted uncomfortably down the sidewalk a bit out of the driveway. Later that day a couple gents from the county school district came and replaced the entire mailbox pole and box, explained the bus had backed into it and destroyed it, not the kids. After I thanked them and called and thanked the district office, I found the contact info for the office that maps the school bus stops and asked them to move the stop out of my driveway. They agreed and I haven't had any issues for years. Who the duck was the genius that decided that a residential driveway would be the area bus stop? That's how it was where I grew up. Pretty common in the suburbs. Told a bunch of kids to shut up because I'm trying to sleep. This is grandma and grandpa territory. Well I'm 26 and it was only 10pm so to me yes. I once told a bunch of grandmas and grandpas to shut up because I was trying to sleep. Got excited about buying a vacuum, among other household items that would make me groan as a child. Whenever I buy something, I try to find some enthusiast subreddit or other online community first and go with their recommendation. Without fail, it's always a great choice, and you actually get pretty hyped about it as well for when it arrives. Which is weird when it's something usually incredibly mundane. I love doing this. 2. My favorite is a nice LED flashlight I got from someone on Reddit. It has lasted me for years and I use it as a bike headlight, a headlamp, and a flashlight as needed. Had a one night stand and it somehow came up that we were both in the market for a new set of dishes. So the next morning we got up early and went out shopping. Never saw him again but I'm still very happy with my dishes. He just wanted you to think of him every time you used your new dishes. God tear player. Went to the dentist on my own volition. Bought a set of Tupperware with the lids attached. And being extremely excited about it. No missing lids in this methodican house. All in the span of a week. Bought a carpet cleaner. Bought a new set of non-stick skillets. Cleaned out the closet and several other nooks where stuff likes to hide. Me and the wife acted like kids after Christmas. One night you go to bed hardcore rock and roll. The next day you're excited about a grocery store grand opening. A few years ago, they replaced a major bridge that I commuted over. They opened the eastbound side on a work day. So cool. Drove over it. The westbound side was open during spring break. I got up. Drove over it. 
got off at the first exit after the bridge, and drove back home. I also went to the grand opening of the new bridge and I never do civic minded stuff. Fun thing is how your dentist fears change over the years. As a kid I was scared it was going to hurt. These days, I'm more scared that the doctor is going to make a mistake. As she digs inside the root canal, it's a few micron to the wrong side and the whole tooth is lost. Kinda hard not to think about that while in the chair. Picked my child up from a party. Common name of child, your dad's here. Well, dang, I'm a grown up. That happened to me the first week my daughter was in daycare. Two or three older kids acted like it was their job to announce loudly whenever a parent showed up. What cracked me up was once I forgot my daughter's jacket and I came back after I had already picked up my daughter and the same two or three kids sounded off and then realized my daughter had already left was very confused why I came back a second time. I have three kids, and it still feels alien to call them my daughter or my son. What, they let me have those? One of my colleagues has a 4 month old daughter at the ripe old age of 22. He told me when they were leaving the hospital, he and his gf were both thinking the same thing. They are just giving her to us, you're letting me take this thing home? I have 3 kids born when I was 29 34 and my husband was 37 42 and we felt that way every time. I wonder if anyone leaves the hospital thinking, I know exactly what I'm doing. I took beer out of the fridge because there wasn't room for my vegetables. Then drank the beer right? Seriously, what happened to the beer? I'm getting a little nervous over here. OP. Turned myself into prison. I got the judge to delay my sentence for a month. But that meant I had to willingly walk into the jail on the date we agreed on. Having only spent a little over a day in jail before. It took some deep breaths before I started that walk. I hope you got your life back on track man. I did, am. Um, almost every one of my run-ins with the law involved alcohol in one way or the other. Gave up drinking in 2016 when my last bad arrest was and haven't had an incident involving a cop since. I am sensing a correlation. I'm not an AA and I don't walk around telling people I'm a recovering alcoholic. I don't believe in that system or mindset because alcohol still controls your life. I don't hate on it either. For I believe each individual their own unique solution to a problem. In the past year that I have been out of jail I have only consumed alcohol 5 times and each time it wasn't enough to get drunk. 2-4. Beers over the course of several hours. I got a little buzz and had fun doing whatever I was doing. Fantasy football draft was one of the times, but I woke up feeling like total shit the next day. Back when I used to drink every day, I never woke up hungover got headaches or puked, and I was drinking a lot back then, after those few crappy days where I had a massive hangover from 4 beers, it made me lose even more interest in alcohol, that plus 3 months in jail, I thought I was going to do a year plus, but I hired a very good lawyer, 1 month in rehab, $30,000 in costs, not including rehab, 5 years of probation and 6.5 years of license suspension all because of alcohol change my perception of the drug and how it affects me. In addition, I don't go around preaching about how horrible alcohol is because it isn't for a lot of people. For over a decade I had fun drinking, having parties, cookouts, going out to bars and socializing was fun. I still did some dumb stuff, as we all did because we would drink a lot. Early 20s, Maniunk. Philly, but it was not criminally dumb shit. I changed in my late 20s and alcohol stopped making me have fun. So I stopped drinking. I wish I could say my mental health has improved since then but it hasn't noticeably. Let's say on a scale that measures mental health. I went from a 3 to a 4. Every day is a struggle but today I am going on over 24 hours without a major depressive state and without any major panic attacks. I am still a little nervous. For no reason but it is not like the anxiety that I am used to facing. This feeling is probably only temporary but the fact that it has been over an entire day is awesome. Thanks for the support. Hey man. Good for you for making changes to your life. I am 3 years clean from oxycodone and I'm here to tell you that the struggle never completely goes away. Most days it's far enough at bay that I don't even pay attention to it. Some days it comes back and cripples me as hard as those first few days of dope sickness did. Counseling. That's my suggestion. Not even for addiction or for recovery. Just regular old emotional counseling. 
It is a wonderful tool. Good luck. Signed a surgery consent for a 5 day old. Under alternatives to surgery. Death. Just death. He'll be 27 soon. This made me so happy to read. Sign a surgery consent for a 20 day old. Same alternatives. He is 3 and climb trees. Instead of playing one more game or one more turn. I decided to turn it off as I had work in the morning and needed sleep. 21 year old me would stayed up till 3 and went in half asleep. Sid Media shakes his head. But his heart nods in acknowledgement. Driving to my girlfriend's, now wife, college to inform her that her dad had passed away and bringing her home to be with her family. I was 18 or 19 at the time and remember feeling like I was in way over my head but that it was something I had a duty to do. I can't say I've done something so important, but I helped my girlfriend run away from her abusive home and find a homeless shelter when she was 17 and I was 19. Definitely not my happiest day, but I felt I did the right thing. So I understand what it feels to be going in too deep, too young. I know somebody might ask, so I'll let you know I didn't bring her to my home because my mother didn't allow it, so a shelter had to do. What was the outcome of that? She decided to go back to help her younger sisters who stayed at home. She eventually graduated high school through a lot of work. Now she's working and attending college. We broke up about a year after that, but she's doing fine. I think she found a way to keep her mother under control and still move her life forward. I started a sentence with when I was your age, in a condescending tone while talking to a child. I do this ironically to people a few years younger than me. The funniest person to do it to, though, is my friend who's a week younger than me, so I can just tell her what I was doing a week ago. One of my closest friends is like 6 days younger than me. I need to do this next time I see him. Went to a grocery store and only bought groceries. I have yet to achieve such level of adulthood. Can't go for groceries without some beer or frozen pizza I didn't plan on buying. Frozen pizzas and groceries? Oops. Made cremation arrangements for my fiance. That's heartbreaking. I'm so sorry. Instead of telling what I want from our relationship, I started to listen, and this time I didn't have to break up with her. I was Santa one year. Actually care how your lawn looks compared to your neighbors who must mow it every other day because it's always so damn perfect. I love the suburban phenomena of the lawn mower chain. First nice day of spring it begins. One man on the block somewhere looks out and sees his old adversary, the grass. He knows that green blanket of ever growing chore will be there whenever but he says to himself, it's a nice day, may as well get started for the year, across the neighborhood, town, and dare I say state, it spreads. He has started the lawnmower chain reaction. Men nearby hear the sound of a running mower and with a sigh confront their own lawn. This pushes the noise out further like ripples on a pond until at last, it has fully begun. Yesterday my next door neighbor mowed. Ducker, I'm here at ground zero. I got rid of all the clutter and accumulated stuff in the house and boiled it down to just what's actually needed and put to use. The feeling when you can finally sit down after decluttering and cleaning up is amazing. I called a group of teenagers a bunch of wild animals. Didn't even notice I was waving my fist in the air. When did my pants get this high up? I emotionally dropped people I had cared about who obviously didn't care about me. Took me a while but I'm finally feeling okay. This is so ducking hard but worth it. Good on you. I am the only child of divorced parents. The most adult thing I've ever had to do was make the heartbreaking decision to send my dad to hospice after a massive stroke. He never talked about what he would want done in a situation like that. I still blame myself for killing him. He died on Father's Day 6 years ago this year. In no way did you kill him. You did the best thing for him. A massive stroke sends someone on a downward spiral hard and fast. Look at it this way. You put him where he had constant care and he still didn't make it. You couldn't have done better at home. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. They said they could have put in feeding tubes and other barbaric things and he might last 6 more months or so in a nursing home. I know he wouldn't have wanted that. At least I hope that's true. I miss him every day. Thank you for allowing me to talk about him. I have a meeting with my lawyer last week to write my well. Caution. Well. 
that should do it. Dot, and you get a bill for $700. Was on my way to pick up drugs some 15 year old kid asked me if I knew where to get drugs I told him to get his ass home. More drugs for me or resell immediately for inflated price to buy more drugs then sell those drugs and repeat for infinite drugs and money. I washed my walls. Washing walls is one of those things you don't realize needs done. Until you actually look at them closely and go you. I've found the easiest way is to buy a cheap sponge mop. It covers a large area and can get the higher parts up toward the ceiling with minimal effort. I've been saving for my dream car since I was 15. 97 RSP Toyota Supra Turbo. I could buy one right now but instead I'm saving for a house so that I won't have a mortgage. I found one a few years ago that had 22k miles on it and the guy only wanted 40k for it. Toyota had always done the maintenance on it and he had all the paperwork proving it. The car had never even seen the rain. I punched myself in the face that day to make sure I didn't buy it. One day I will own one. Terrifying self control. Unexpectedly come into a bunch of money and invest it rather than spend it. Same. But I spent it. And paid off all of my credit card debt which I've proudly maintained a zero balance on for 4 years after carrying a 515k balance for 7. I drove around for an extra hour on my way home from the gym just so I could listen to the rest of an NPR story. Paid all of my credit card bills as soon as I got paid and spending my weekend studying for GM80 instead of partying and getting drunk like I wanted to. I'm the sole breadwinner for my wife, two children, and myself. Dang. Supporting an entire family on a single person's income in 2018. Actually incredible. Bravo. My dude. I ran away from my abusive home at 16 with less than $40 in my possession. Worked all kinds of jobs simultaneously to finish college on time. Wrote my thesis by hand because I was so poor. Worked some more and saved for grad school so I could have more career opportunities. I have no more debt and finally have savings after years of poverty and struggle. Went to therapy to confront my anxiety, PTSD and depression. It's been a little over 10 years since I ran away. Life isn't perfect but I'm the happiest I've ever been. I wouldn't have the life I have now if I didn't run away when I was 16 and, in a lot of ways, that's the most adult thing I've ever done. Made multiple copies of mine and my daughter's birth certificate just in case. Once I took the tiny sliver of soap left and added it to a new bar. I did my taxes last week and found I was getting $1,700 back. Instead of being happy I was pissed that I let the government hold onto that money for a year instead of me being able to invest it. I remember doing my taxes a few years ago and I pretty much hit $0. I owed nothing. And the government owed me nothing. I was crestfallen as I had always counted on that little bump to cover whatever emergency was going on in my life at the time. But my tax guy was like. No no. This is how you win at taxes. This means that the government isn't holding onto your money interest free. Now I'm a bit more of an adult with a grip on my finances and I get what he meant. I'm only 28. But last summer I saw a kid. Maybe 15 or 16 sitting on a skateboard smoking a cigarette. As a former smoker, I felt compelled to warn him of the dangers of smoking. I said hey kid. I know you probably don't care. But one day you're gonna regret smoking. And it's easier to quit early on than it will be when you get older. He slowly stood up, skated off, and said duck off as he skated by. I thought to myself yeah, I would have said the same shit as a kid. LOL. I did a business and two transactions in one day. I had to make the decision to put down a beloved cat. Walking home from the vet with an empty cat carrier was when I felt like I had finally graduated to adulthood. I did not like that feeling. My roommate and best friend committed suicide recently. When she never came home I filed the police report. And I went through her room when the officers came by to talk to us. We found a box labeled to her ex. And I opened it with the officers there because she had put me as the return address. Inside we found a simple booking for a hotel room. And the police left. Time feels like an eternity when you know what's going to be at the end of that road. But you hold on hope that there's a chance that she might be okay. She wasn't. And I screamed my soul out on my living room floor. But for only a little while. 
because my friend was estranged from her family, I didn't have time to cry, because someone needed to find some way to contact these people. From there it was a flurry of trying to help coordinate arrangements with her family in another state, talking to friends about what happened, preparing her precious items to go home to her family, and all the while I kept finding more notes she left for me to find. This was less than a month ago, and I'm still helping close out accounts. I don't want to be an adult right now. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.